Hi, in this video, we're going to have a look at how to create a listing page. What I mean by listing page is a page that has a search box, maybe some filters, and we have a list of items ultimately, and maybe a load more. So I wanted to be able to create this type of page. And you might have multiple lists, like you might have press releases, news, events, uh, tender listings, you might have different types and you don't want to have to maintain each one separately so in case for example you want to change how the search box, box looks like or you want to maybe move the filters over the search box, whatever you want to do as a change you don't want to have to do it manually across every search page you have. So what I started off thinking was okay I'll create a rendering variant with these components but then it quickly arose to me that I would want to change the search scope based on the type of page. So if it's a press releases page, it needs to get only press releases as a search result for this listing uh, or within this search result component and so on and so forth. This was easy because this is out of the box. Any page you can have a search scope for it. But the second thing I wanted to do was I wanted to actually change the rendering variant of each of these search results uh so that it maps to how i want it to look so a press release page might look like this with a uh, an icon of the file type a title a subtitle date and a download whereas news might have a thumbnail a title and maybe the date of the news article and you want that flexibility to be provided for you so in order to do that uh, i had to do some coding and we're going to see how that's implemented as well so I started off by creating my listing page rendering variant. Again, it's within the page content structure. So uh, remember from last time, we actually cloned the page content and created something called page content structure, which lives in each page layout. So the listing page has a component, component content row uh, called 12, which has the search box, search results, and load more. Now. If we look at these, I had to make them very basic, as in I didn't I didn't want to pass through anything. So I had my search box with no information or basic information only, search results and load more with the same concept. And you can see here what I've done for the rendering variants. So rendering variants are called field names within the XML. So what I did was I said field names equal hash hash field names hash hash. This is just an identifier for me so that I know I need to replace that and we're going to see how to replace that in a little while and this is mainly my HTML I just created it as a component then when I went to my actual page so if we go to any page for example the edge standards well, I'll see here if I just search for scope here we have it we have the search scope is standard listing. So by default, what this is going to do is actually filter out any search result that does not have its own scope. It's going to be filtered out with this. So my listing that I've just seen here, because it does not have a search scope, it's going to filter with that. And I created a field called rendering variant. It should have been a drop list, but for demo purposes, I just created it as a single line that actually takes up what rendering variant we want to use for to render the search results itself. So again, how this is going to be rendered. Okay, now the actual internal component or the search result component does not understand this rendering variant. So what I want to do was to ultimately copy this information into the field names field that's here. This field names field. So in order to do so, what I did was I overrid the search, the sorry, the render component class. So you can see that I inherited from render component field. What I did was I overrid the update search signature just in case I want to put a specific signature in case I have multiple items. And then I overrid the update search results variant. And that what this does is if the field names is not null and the rendering variant is not null in the context of item and its value is not null just copy and paste the item from rendering variant dot value into the field name so what i'm actually doing here is anytime this field
anytime this field has a value, just override the field names with that value. And this will actually create the listing we want that's customizable. So as soon as someone creates a new listing, a new page of type listing, what they will only need to do is just enter the rendering variant, choose their search scope, and there you have it. They have a full page. So it makes it much easier for content editors to maintain their pages. Okay, just before I forget, other than, of course, overriding the render component field with the render component, what we need to do is in the app config include, we need to patch instead. So I added a processor to patch instead of render component with my own type. And there you have it. It's that easy once you know how to do it. Thanks for watching.